William Nolan from John Hopkins. He's going to be speaking to us about radiolytic denaturation of bovine milk proteins with fast neutron bombardment. Wow, it's good stuff. Okay. okay, thank you. Hello everyone, I'm William Nolan and I'm really honored to do my research here at the ISEC 19 conference. This is just a, a presentation about my journey through a particular project I worked on and how my mentors aided me with it. So to begin, I'm just I'm a 16 year old student currently enrolled in um, a private school in Annapolis, the Key School in Annapolis, Maryland. I um, I'm a product of the numerous STEM initiatives uh, that began over 10 years ago when I was a child. I'm fortunate to be an Aspire intern currently at the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory, which is how I had the opportunity to present here. This project itself was intended for a local science fair, but this research was an original idea and not part of any mentored experiment. I'm fortunate to live close to Naval Academy, which afforded me access to equipment not normally available to a high school student. So there are going to be three parts of the presentation. First, the science project process. This will deal with the science project itself and how it performed. The second will be my motivation for the project. And the third will be, uh, the, the third and final section will deal with my mentors and how they assisted me with my project. So the, pro the, the intent of an experiment is to focus on a subject inquiry or problem that must be, must be researched. My problem in particular drew from the proteins of bovine milk and the allergic reactions some people contract from them. I wanted to determine if there was a method to denature or degrade the bovine milk proteins without affecting the milk's overall composition. So this is just my um, STEM process that I went through for this project. The first step was gathering these parts. Milk was easy to find, but fast neutron radiation, that's a little bit more difficult and federally <laughs> controlled. Um, fortunately, one of my mentors was a was a professor emeritus of nuclear nuclear engineering at the United States Naval Academy. So, therefore, before I started, I needed to write a detailed experimental proposal for and for review by a nuclear safety officer. After um, after writing this up, sending it in and receiving approval, I had to I I learned that the fast neutron generator, which was what I was going to be using, was out of commission, and was um and for about three months. This with a wrench in the wrench in the gears, and I was unable to continue with the project until I found an alternative solution, and that was used. And I had to write a separate a separate rule using plutonium beryllium neutron sources. So the, this low the low neutron flux of these sources extended the time from from like one to four hours to up to sixty four hours. So I so I had to again devise another method to keep the milk samples cold. Um, keeping it, keeping these samples in the refrigerator with these sources was not an option, unless on the off chance you want to radioactive your fridge. So to combat this, I used a styrofoam cooler, which is used with both dry ice and regular ice. These strings you see hanging out are tied to individual milk samples, so that allow the lab technician to eat quickly and easily remove them to minimize its overall exposure time. So this fourth step was just running the experiment itself. My experiment called for removal of the milk samples at various intervals to determine the actual the exposure time to nature of the proteins. This experiment was, was done on February 2018, which, as some, some of you may remember, was, was interrupted or, in part, taken up by a government shutdown. Since this was done in the Naval Academy, my samples were radiated over the shutdown, and I was unable to move to take them out. Um, so I had to adjust my time exposure for this, and they were and they were and my samples were exposed for unequal time intervals, ranging from seven hours to sixty-four hours. So big time difference. So after this radiation, I was unsure if these samples would become, say, super radioactive or something really dangerous to drink. So if that that was the case, then I would have to just end the experiment at that. So I so I used a high dex liquid simulation counter. To, uh, which proved that the milk was safe to drink. It did also identify short-lived isotopes in the milk, such as calcium, um, that, but none of, none of these made the right milk hazardous or radioactive. <coughs> the second part was the actual analysis of the experiment, 
this was in, I further had to reach out to another section of the Naval Academy, in this case, the biochemistry lab. This bio, the biochemistry lab um, allowed me access to use two different types of um, analyses. I first used a Bradford assay, a colorimetric assay, which when bonds to proteins, turns, the, turns, the, um, turns from brown to blue. So then I so I use a spectrophotometer, spectrophotometer to use it to determine the spectra of the sample and then determine how many proteins are in it. But I got a weird result from that. Instead of actual, instead of really seeing a deep overall decrease in proteins, proteins increased according to that sample, which made no sense. So I um, so I 